The assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Mr. Shinzo Abe reiterates the eternal relevance and immortal significance of the Gandhian thought of ahimsa or non-violence. Given that Mr. Abe had gracefully relinquished office due to ill health, unlike what is happening in Sri Lanka right now, Mr. Abe epitomized the faith of the Japanese people in democratic credentials. This is an irony because Japan was demilitarized and impounded as punishment for warmongering, both before and during the Second World War. Due to the war reparations, Japan was disallowed from maintaining a military force. This pacifist worldview left Japan with a lenient view of security as a whole. It manifested in a lack of adequate security training and consequently there was a very expensive lack of security for the former Prime Minister. To pay the ultimate price for his forefathers' errors is, alas, a matter of cruel destiny. What is the point of human evolution, one wonders, if all it takes to dispute someone's thought is a weapon? In this day and age of sophisticated communications, a disgruntled man had the means to arbitrarily bleed to death a statesman who held in his hands and his intellect the power to change the destiny of millions. Words fail to measure this tragedy. But investigators have their hands full in probing the conspiracy. Who gains from all this? Mr. Abe's appointed successor was replaced last year by the current Prime Minister, Mr. Fumio Kishida. But Mr. Abe's legacy lies in his economic prowess. Therefore, there cannot be any political conspiracy within Japan itself. Hailed as the longest serving post-war Japanese Prime Minister, Mr. Abe took credit for Abenomics, crucially in cushioning the fiscal fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. His handling of the Japanese economy during the pandemic was the icing on the cake, as he in the past effectively prevented a fiscal meltdown that coincided with the Fukushima nuclear disaster and the Sendai Tohoku megathrust earthquake, both of which preceded his taking office for the second time as Prime Minister in 2012. His fiscal policies buffered the small and medium industries losses during the pandemic. Indeed, the Japanese economic purse strings had an enormous positive impact globally. Japanese aid for emerging economies epitomized sustainable, inclusive, win-win partnerships for stakeholders. Japan's hesitant leadership in naval exercises for the Quad helped Quad member states obtain a technological edge in their military hardware. Again, a win-win partnership for demilitarized Japan. It also served the need for maritime security in the Western Pacific Ocean. No Japanese Prime Minister has had complete success in stopping illegal whaling in the Antarctic Ocean or other international waters, despite Japan's high scores in Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Japanese investment in India's bullet train project in the plush Mumbai Ahmedabad sector was also not the epitome of sustainable development. Nevertheless, a welcome investment opportunity. If such bullet trains can be made to address the needs of differently abled passengers in harmony with sustainable development goal number 17, for instance, it would justify prioritizing infrastructure development over other SDGs in a warped regime in India. All the same, the very tragic assassination of the former Japanese Prime Minister signals the urgent need for tighter gun control, both in Japan and around the world. Globally, the menace of guns and other weapons in the wrong hands underscores the need for the fourth state to engage with mental health issues, lest mental health too becomes a nightmarish pandemic. I am Vinay Bhushan, reporting for the Digital Discourse Foundation.